All right, guys. <clears throat> I'm going to get everybody a chance to jump on here real quick. Uh, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Uh, sometimes I'm not sure if the audio is set up correctly, and the only way I can do that is to for have you guys uh, give me a response to it and let me know if the audio is coming in clear. Um, I will have to take frequent water breaks to take drinks of water because uh, I'm dealing with uh, actually trying to overcome a sinus infection, uh, which I am feeling better, but it's been a rough uh, last week or so. Had to go on some antibiotics. Had to actually change up my fast uh, because of the antibiotics and stuff for the sinus infection. I actually have to eat something, so I've kind of shifted into a uh, more of a Daniel type of fast. Uh, so good. I'm glad everybody uh, has given me feedback on the audio. So again, guys, uh, let me know where you guys are joining me from. Uh, as always, when you guys come on, and uh, I'm going to try my best to get through this because of my voice. Uh, again of dealing with a sinus infection, all this stuff in your throat being raw and this and that. So uh, I will work with what I have. But again, thank you guys uh, uh, for your, uh, your taking the time out to come on here today. I want to continue our fasting series again as we continue this series. I want to deal with today specifically on how fasting rebuilds and restores a generation. Again, uh, God bless you from Nairobi. Uh, from Minnesota, Ohio, Albuquerque, and everywhere that you guys are joining in from. Again, we're going to be dealing today, we're going to continue our fasting segment, our fasting series rather, and today I want to deal with how fasting can actually restore and rebuild a generation. And again, here's our uh, our our text of this is, of course, Isaiah chapter 58, and, and uh the word of the Lord says, is this not the fast which I've chosen? And he goes through segments in this. And we're going to try to cover all these during this series. But if you go down again, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6, he starts and he says, is this not the fast which I've chosen? And then you go down here to verse 12. Again, Isaiah 58, verse 12. He says, those from among you shall build the old waste places you shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. Let me read that again, Isaiah 58, 12. Again, during this time of prayer and fasting, he says, those from among you, that's you and I, shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. So again, just from this, I want to show you something. Number one, he says uh, that there's uh, that through this time of prayer and fasting, the Lord can use us to build the old ways places, raise up the foundations of many generations, and repair and restore. I want to get that in your spirit. Repair, build up, and restore, all right? Not just our own lives, but for the generations to come. Because you and I represent uh, our generation, but we carry the seed in us to perpetual generations. Some of you already see the manifestation of that with your own sons and daughters in the natural. And then you have your spiritual sons and daughters uh, in the faith. So you're raising up generations of sons and daughters in the natural and also in the body of Christ. Uh, good afternoon, Martin from South Africa. We bless South Africa. I pray a mighty move of God sweep through South Africa. So again, I think you're going to enjoy this segment. Okay. Um, again, Isaiah mentions this in Isaiah 58, dealing with prayer and fasting. But if you go, if you skip over to Isaiah chapter 61, verse four, listen what the prophet said. He says, and they shall rebuild the old ruins and they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. So when you put this and you cut this together, I'm just going to make this short and straight to the point. Notice 
It is a rebuilding, not a building, but it's a rebuilding, a restructuring, a repairing, a restoring. In other words, they're using what was original, the original blueprint, the original foundation, the original structure in which it was built on. But as it, as time progressed, as, as things happened, situations occurred, as a result of that, there was desolations, there was waste, there was uh, things begin to depreciate. Things may have folded. Things may have, uh, uh, you know, a building can can rot. It can close its doors. Things happen. Okay, so I believe. Watch this. If we go into the text of Isaiah fifty eight through this season of prayer and fasting, I believe it's the will of the Lord that He would begin to watch this rebuild and restore. Those things which have been devastated and and tore down in times past in our lives. Wow, God bless you, Wendy from Saudi Arabia. Come on, somebody, look at that. Look at that, Saudi Arabia. All right, listen to this. God is in the rebuilding and restoring business, my friends. And I believe during this season of prayer and fasting that the Lord wills and desires to watch this, to see things in our lives restored and repaired through times of prayer and fasting. What am I talking about? Marriages can be restored and and uh, uh, restored and repaired. Ministries can be restored and repaired. Families can be restored and repaired. Businesses that can be restored and repaired. Finances can be restored and be repaired. So I want you, listen, I'm believing this for my own life. Come on. The years that the caterpillar, the canker worm and, uh, and the locusts and, and all those have devoured. I believe that God can restore because he's in the restoring business. Come on. Weeping may endure for the night, but come on. Joy cometh in the morning. I know 2016 may have been a rough year for a lot of people, and you may have been, you may have seen a lot of devastation. You may see a lot of cracks. You may have seen a lot of brokenness. You may have seen your health be under attack and dwindle. You may have seen marriage, your marriages has been under attack and dwindled, and mar and this has happened in your family, and this has happened in your business, and this has happened in your finances. But I'm telling you, through a season of prayer and fasting, God can begin to restore and repair that which has been uh, in seasons of attack, okay? So number one, I believe through prayer and fasting, God wants to restore and repair, but watch this. We take it a step further. The prophet Isaiah says to raise up the foundations of many generations. Listen, my friends, one person, I don't know who I'm talking to on YouTube or Facebook, you, you alone can be the one person in your bloodline that can reverse, listen to this, reverse and break curses and destroy any generational hereditary curses that may run in your family. Let me say that again. It takes one person, one person can destroy a lineage and a generational cycle of alcoholism, drug addictions, Divorce in your family, diseases is passed through the bloodline, diseases is passed down from generation to generation, poverty that's went from generation to generation. One person in your family, in your bloodline, can draw make a draw a plumb line and draw a line in the sand and say, enough is enough. And as you begin to pray and as you begin to fast and you begin to declare the word of the Lord, God can begin to break these things off of our lives. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. And if you have to, come on. The Lord will begin by the Holy Ghost and begin to reveal to you. You know this, guys. I don't have to really elaborate on this too much. If alcoholism runs in your family, you already know that. If drug addiction runs in your family, you already know that. If lust and divorce and infidelity runs in your family, I don't need to preach to you about that. You already are aware of that. Listen, your grandma may have died from this and your grandma may have died from that and somebody else in your family may have died. But listen, the devil is a liar and it doesn't mean you have to die of the same thing because one person can be regenerated and reborn in the spirit, stand in the gap and make up the hedge and reverse 
what the enemy has plotted against you. Come on, that should make you excited right there. In other words, just as Isaiah 58 says, you shall raise up. Quit waiting on somebody else to do it. It may be it's God's calling you, ma'am, you, sir, to be that Moses to stands in the gap and makes up the hedge in your family and in your marriage and in your whatever the case may be in your generation to raise up the foundations of many generations. And you may say, you know, uh, marriage. I, I remember when my wife and I got married 16 years ago and on her side of the family, there was divorce that ran her family. And on my side of the family, there was divorce that ran in my family. But when we both gave our heart to Jesus on the, in the year 2000, the very first thing we did, I remember sitting on the front porch of an apartment building in which I was uh, a roommate with my, I was a roommate with my roommate as in an apartment. And my wife and I were dating at the time and we gave our heart to the Lord. And the very first thing I said was, I'm going to follow Jesus and this is what I'm called to do. And if this is not something that you want to do, then we have to part our ways. But if it is, then uh, then then if you'll stay with me, I believe God's going to do something mighty. And as time progressed, we eventually got engaged. And as, when we got engaged and I, we sat down and we talked about this, I said, listen, uh, I know what I know what our our past looks like. I know what our bloodline looks like. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And my friends, by the grace of God and by his blessing, uh, we are this year we'll be celebrating 17 years of marriage. Has it been tough? Yes. Has there been trials? Yes. Has there been tribulation? Yes. But I'm going to tell you, friends, as long as God is the anchor, as God, long as God is the foundation, come on, the foundation, then we can remain strong and he can be our anchor. And because it's not about, here's the thing, guys, once you get past the, when you get older, it's, it's no longer about you. It's about about your children. It's about the next generation. And I said, I refuse to allow my children, I refuse to allow my sons to grow up in an environment that I grew up in. I refuse for them to grow up without a father in a broken home and this and that. So we drew a plumb line. We drew a line in the sand and said, as for me and my house, come on somebody, we choose to raise up the foundations of many generations. Notice I said generations because the, come on, I'm not talking about just my, my children, but I'm talking about my children's children. And I feel the Holy Ghost all over me right now from the head to my feet on my arms and everywhere. So I know the anointing is in this message. Let me give you an example of this. This was profound. Some of you may have heard this before. If this is the first time you've ever heard this, this will be a blessing to you. But I want to show you an example of one godly man who chose to stand in the gap, no matter what it looked like, and leave a legacy of God, a godly legacy. And his name was Jonathan Edwards. This man was a great example. Uh, he was a Puritan preacher from the 1700s. Jonathan Edwards and his wife, Sarah, left a godly legacy for his 11 children. Now, let me explain. At the turn of the 20th century, American educator, a man by the name of, uh, and he was a pastor, a man by the name of A.E. Winship decided to trace out, in other words, he researched the descendants of Jonathan Edwards almost 150 years after his death. His findings were astounding especially when he compared the, his findings to a, also another man by the name of Max Jukes, who was an ungodly, wicked man who also had a descendants, who had descendants. Okay, Jukes' legacy came to the forefront when the family trees of 42 different men in the New York prison system traced back to his lineage. Okay, Jonathan Edwards' godly legacy. Watch this, guys. Let me get a drink of water. Like I said, my throat's a little raw. And when I begin to read up on this, 
Jonathan Edwards every day would take his sons and he would bless them and he would exhort them and he would speak the word of God over them and he declared the promises of God over them. He declared great things over them. He declared what the Lord said about them every single day over their lives. And, and as a result of this, Jonathan Edwards' legacy included one United States vice president, three United States senators, three governors, three mayors, 13 college presidents, 30 judges, 65 professors, 80 public office holders, 100 lawyers, and 100 missionaries. Again, all this, all these individuals came out of the lineage of one man who said, I'm going to stand in the gap and make a difference for generations to come by my sacrifice, by my commitment, by my devotion, and by my walk with God. But on the other hand, the man, the ungodly man by the name of Max Jukes, who chose to reject God, God bless you. There's T.D. Hale, my brother from another mother. If you're not following Pastor T.D. Hale, you need to follow him. You'll be blessed by his ministry out of Ohio. A great godly uh, man there. So thank you, T.D., for coming on here. Uh, again, Max Jukes, his descendants, watch this, included. Now, watch. I want to show you the difference, guys. The Bible says the, the, the memory of the righteous shall be blessed, but the memory of the wicked shall rot. It shall not be in the earth. Max Jukes, who was a ungodly man, out of his descendants included seven murderers, 60 thieves, 50 women of debauchery, 130 convicts, 310 paupers, uh, and uh, with over 2,300 years lived in poorhouses, and 400 who were physically wrecked by indulgent living. According to the research that, again, A.E. Winship did, again, over 150 years after the death of Jonathan Edwards, he discovered that Max Jukes' descendants actually cost the state more than $1,250,000. So you want to tell them, listen, here's the bottom line, guys. What you and I do not only affect the now, but it will affect the then. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me say that again. What you and I do today will not only affect us present tense, but it will affect future tense. So when I, golly. So if you want a motivation for to begin to declare the works of the Lord and begin to pray for your children and to begin to stand up for godliness and to stand up for righteousness, I know that if the Lord tarries and I, that day comes and I go in to be with the Lord, I can, I can rest in glory knowing that my sons will do great and mighty exploits for the Lord and they will do far more greater than what I could have done in my lifetime. And that's what I declare and that's what I decree and that's that's what I believe in Jesus' name. In fact, my eight-year-old son, is already he's already said when he gets old enough, he wants to work for me. He wants to come alongside of me, and he wants to, to help me with end-time headlines. And my friends, I'm telling you, that brings tears to my eyes. That brings that gets me emotional because that, that my friends, is showing me that seed is being planted. There's, there's a desire for him to, again, to carry the mantle of his father. Okay? So... This is powerful, guys. Now, let's move on. I got to get on this. So we talked about building up the old waste places. We talked about restoring and repairing. I believe God, through this season of prayer and fasting, is going to begin to restore and repair marriages, ministries, families, businesses, and finances. But he also wants to, he's looking at the eyes of the Lord or going to and fro, and he's looking throughout the earth, and he's looking for someone whose heart is turned towards him, who he can say, look at this man, look at this woman. Uh, they're going to leave a godly heritage, and, a, and they're looking to raise up the foundations of of many generations and number three okay watch this he says that you shall be a repairer of the breach now what is a breach a breach is a uh it's an opening it's a breach if i built a, a fence around my home it keeps not only uh 
And for instance, many people build a, a fence around their home to keep their animals in or keep their children in, and it keeps uh, thieves and it keeps people out. So it keeps what you want in and keep what you want from coming in out. But if there's a breach, it means there's an opening. Somehow there there's an open that one of the, the a part of the fence was breached, a part of the wall was breached, a part of the security was breached. Come on, somebody! And as a result, there was an opening for uh, the enemy to invade or intrude. So, guys, listen. Breaches can come in our. Let me back up. Breaches can come in marriages. Breaches can come in ministries. Breaches can come in our families. Breaches can come in our businesses. And breaches can come in our finances through many different avenues, through sin, through negligence, through apathy, through uh, through uh, through uh, ignorance. A lot of these things can open up the door or cause a breach. Now, let me give you a personal example of restoring or repairing the breach. Uh, many years ago, uh, some of you have heard this, and if you've heard this, please bear uh, bear with those who have not, because there's going to be a lot of individuals on here that they've never heard this, and they'll be blessed by this. But at the, at the other hand, and, and you know how it goes, guys. Uh, preachers will they'll they'll tell stories a lot of times because it's not just about one person, but it's many people who may have not heard this. But many years ago, years ago. We were on a 21 days. We were on 21 days of prayer and fasting with the Evangel Rural Prayer Center in Louisville, Kentucky, with Pastor Bob Rogers. Uh, and on the third day, and we had never done a fast before. On the third day of this fast, uh, my wife had a dream, and in and, and, and this dream, she saw me uh, being restored to my biological father. Now. What made this an absolute miracle is because for 23 years, I had not known if my father was alive. I didn't know where he was. And I've been asking the Lord where he was, if he was alive and what, and what was, what was the situation with that? Um, so for a season, I was asking the Lord, where is my biological father? I wanted to find him. So for 23 years, uh, and the situation was when I was about, when I was a little boy, real young when I, not even out of the crib age uh my dad actually left or he he left my, my, myself and he left my mother so my mother was left alone to raise me without a father so I, I know what it's like to be raised without a father and then my stepfather came along when i was five years of age and he again he was an alcoholic and and this and that so that's i don't want to reiterate a lot of this but my biological father was not in my life for 23 years so don't miss it there was a breach in my my uh, relationship with my a biological family with my father. There was a breach there. There was a breach made. So for 23 years, I I didn't I didn't know where my father was. But on the third day of a 21 days of prayer and fasting, on the third day, my wife had a dream in which I was in a service at Evangel, and someone came and said, "Your dad is outside and he wants to see you." Now, when she told me this dream, uh. I didn't have, honestly, I wish I had the faith to tell you, wow, that praise God. That's, that's glorious. That's awesome. But I actually chuckled and I laughed and I said, well, that's interesting. Okay. Now let me go on. So at the time we were believing God for financial breakthrough. That was one of our greatest prayers during this 21 days of prayer and fasting. Well, the Lord and I'm, the Lord brought the breakthrough financially. And when we went and testified to pastor Rob Rogers, he um, he was so excited about the testimony that he wanted my wife and I to get up on a, an a 1030 service, which was aired locally on WBNA 21, which is a local broadcasting uh, affiliate out of Kentucky. Uh, so it was covering all of Kentuckyana and even parts of southern Indiana. So here we are. On this Sunday morning, we're up in front of the whole church on television, everything. And I was real camera shy then because I was just called into ministry. And that was probably the largest group of people I've ever stood in front of. So I, we're up there testifying of this financial breakthrough that God gave us. And people, yay, people cheered and people celebrated. And they gave God the glory. And we were just moved by it. And, and we went back and we sat down in the congregation and... uh we sat there for about 10 minutes and Pastor Bob was finished on a sermon. All of a sudden, one of the ushers who I know, his name was Hank. I can tell you his name to this day. He came up 
And he said, Ricky, and he got my attention while I was sitting there. And he goes, there's a man, watch this. There's a man out in the parking lot who claims to be your father and he wants to see you. Now, guys, listen, when he said that, immediately my mind went back to my wife's dream and it was almost like a, I can't even explain this, but it was almost like this was surreal. I was like, whoa, wait a minute, is this really happening? And I, and I looked over at my wife's face and it looked like she saw a ghost. And, uh, and so I looked, and I looked at my wife and I said, are you kidding me? And, and, hey, and I said, okay. So we got up, we went outside and to my amazement, there stood my biological father who I'd not seen in 23 years standing there. And I walked up to him and he looked at me and he says, Ricky. And I said, Philip, cause I knew his name. I said, Philip, is that, and he says, yeah. And I said, and the first thing I said, I said, how? And now watch this. This is amazing, guys. Come on, somebody. This is going to build your faith. God was setting up the whole thing. Come on. There's the right place at the right time at the right moment that God has you set up. And when prayer and fasting begins to go up before God as a memorial, God begins to shift and move heaven and earth, and he'll begin to bring your destiny to pass. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost messing with me on this. Because there's people that are watching this right now by YouTube and by Facebook that will be watching this. And you need this miracle. You need, there's a breach in your marriage. There's a breach in your family. And perhaps you've, you don't, you're in the same situation. You've never seen your father, never seen your mother. You've never seen your son, never seen your daughter. But I'm telling you, my friends, that God is still in the business of repairing the breach. So I asked my father, my dad at the time, you know, when I saw him, I said, how, how, how did this happen? He said, he said, well, he said, son, we go to the nine o'clock service. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, stop. So watch this. At Evangel, they have two services. They have a 9 a.m. service because they're so big, they have a 9 a.m. service, and then they have a 10.30 service. So we had been going there for uh, about a year at the time. The whole time we were going there, my dad and his, uh, uh, and his wife was, which, Again, this wasn't my bi my biological mother, but it was his second wife. My my dad and his second wife, they were going to the 9 o'clock service, and my wife and I were going to the 1030 service. But watch this. My dad never knew this. But when I stood up that morning to testify of God's breakthrough in our finances, and it was televised on television, my dad had the television on in the background and it was on WBNA 21 with Evangel on and he was getting ready to go out the door with his wife and they and when when he was about to go out the door he heard Pastor Bob's voice and he says I want to I want Ricky and Melissa Scapero and when he heard my name he knew my name he 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 stopped everything and he says oh my gosh and he turned and he looked and there was me his biological son, there was my wife and I sit up there and he said, that's my son, that's Ricky. And they flipped out. So they immediately stopped all their plans and they, they like lightning, they took off and went to the church and waited out in the parking lot for me to get out of the service. Okay, guys, listen to me. This is an absolute miracle, a miracle of God. Pastor and Pastor Bob, he tells this story. Probably he's probably telling this right now uh, at Evangel because he talks about this every year during the 21 days of prayer and fasting because it was an absolute miracle of God. So watch this. So we begin to uh, again. It took time. We had to restore and repair our relationship. So the first thing we did, we had dinner together, and. We and we knew I took him to this verse. I took him to this verse about Isaiah 50. Now, this was years ago, guys. And we held hands. My father and I held hands. And we began to break every generational curse. We began to break hereditary curses. We began to break the enemy's cyclical assignments off of our bloodline. Come on, somebody. 
And God was, what was he doing? He was repairing and restoring the breach that the, uh, the enemy came in and caused all those years. So as a result of that, friends, our relationship grew stronger and we began to make up for those times. Now, was it weird? Yes. Was it awkward? Yes. And it took time. But then um, just a few years ago, probably about five years ago, my dad ended up, he, uh, uh, he got, he ended up contracting fibrosis of the lungs and through complications of that, he ended up going on to be with the Lord. And I remember when I was there in the hospital with him, um, and I was saying my goodbyes to him. I was thanking God. I said, God, how good of a God you are that you knew ahead of time that this was going to happen and you allowed us to restore our relationship on earth before he passed on to heaven. Come on, guys. I'm telling you, we serve a good, good God who desires, who wills. And I feel the Holy Ghost whew, moving all over me. Woo, man. I'm telling you guys, listen, here's what I want to pray with you guys. Let me show you. Let me give you some scriptures and I'm going to pray with you guys because I really feel a heavy anointing on this. Psalms 23, 3. He restores my soul and he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalms 25, 4. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your past. Why? Because he was a restorer of the past. This is where I want to end with this. He says, number one, watch this. He wants to... He wants to build and repair and restore the old waste places. Number two, he wants us to raise up the foundations of many generations. Number three, he wants us to repair the breaches that are in uh, whatever avenue of in our life, especially families, okay? And number four, he, the Bible says in Isaiah 58 through prayer and fasting, he'll restore the paths. What do I mean by that? Proverbs 22, verses 11 through 13. Discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. And it will deliver you from the way of evil. From the man who speaks perverse things. And from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Come on, somebody. Come on, Pastor TD. I know you're in here and you'll amen me and shout me on this. Him and I talk about this all the time on the telephone. Oh, that come on. We need to ask the Lord and seek the Lord for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for yourselves. But they said we will not walk in it. But my friends, I'm telling you, there's a generation that's hungry and they'll say whatever we got to lay down, whatever it's going to cost, us, whatever we got to abandon, whatever we, we got to leave, we want the old past. We want the ways of the Lord. We want the thus saith the Lord. We want the fear of God back in the house. Come on, somebody. Jeremiah 18, 15, because my people have forgot me, they burn incense to worthless idols, and they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways. Watch this. From the ancient paths to walk in the pathways and not in the highway. But I'm telling you, friends, you may be watching this by Facebook or by YouTube, and you say, pastor or preacher, whatever the case may be, you say, I know that I'm guilty. I used to walk in the old past. I had a relationship with God. I had a covenant with God. I communed with God. I used to pray. I used to fast. I used to read the word. I used to go to church every time the doors were open. I used to love fellowshipping with other believers. But as time went on and I got connected with the wrong people, the wrong place, the wrong choices, the fire began to go out and I began to stray from the old past. And I used to, and now I'm walking in the past of darkness. I'm straying from these things and I, I begin to serve worthless idols. Come on somebody. Things that ha I'm beginning to worship things that cannot do me any good. They can't restore me. They can't repair me. They can't save me. Come on somebody. They can't bless me. But I've taken up these things and if, you, and if that's you and you're listening to this my friend, God, I'm telling you God is in the business of restoring your paths and, all you, and I'm telling you he's just waiting. Isaiah 50 says, is this not the fast which I've chosen? So through a season of prayer and fasting, I believe God wants to do this right now. So I'm going to agree with you on these, on these four areas. 
Okay, number one, I believe right now, I pray the healing power of God. If you're joining me today and you're on a, any type of fast, a partial fast, 21 days of prayer and fasting, 40 days of prayer and fasting, whether it be um, uh, or a Daniel fast, whatever the case may be, come on, join in with us and begin to believe God for the, the rebuilding and the restoring of, of your marriage, the rebuilding and the restoring of your ministry, of your family, of your business, of your finances. God, I thank you, Father, that you're rebuilding and that you're restoring everything that the devil destroyed, brought down, and, and caused chaos in seasons past. I believe this year, this season, 2017, is the year of restoration and rebuilding of the old things that, Lord, that were structured. Marriages are going to be restored. Ministries are being restored and reconciled and repaired. Families that's been that's been devastated through infidelity, through divorce, uh, through, uh, uh, through mistrust or miscommunication, whatever the case may be. Lord, restore now in Jesus' name businesses that once flourished and once prospered and once were open. Lord, I thank you, Father, that we are not, we are not relying on the the stock market of, of, of Wall Street, but we rely on the stock market of heaven. And as long as we're in covenant with him and our finances and we're seeking ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, then my business shall prosper. Come on, somebody. My ministry shall prosper. It shall flourish and it shall uh, be victorious. And Lord, I just thank you for those whose finances have been hit. They've been, they've been struck in their finances in seasons of want, in seasons of need, in the seasons of always borrowing. Lord, I thank you that you're reversing it, repairing it, and restoring their finances. Jobs are coming back. Opportunities are coming back. Promotions are coming your way. Inheritances are coming your way. Lord, I thank you for the blessings of those who are, the, the psalmist said this. He says, I've seen the, the, the rights. He says, I've seen. Uh, he says, I was young and I'm old and I've yet to see the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg of bread. Number two, I believe God's going to raise you up and you may be the only person in your family. But friend, through the blood of Jesus, through a relationship with you, with, with him and through a covenant with him, you can stand in the gap and break every generational curse, every curse of alcoholism, every curse of drug addiction, every curse of divorce, every curse of depression, oppression, of suicide tendencies, diseases, sicknesses, uh, poverty. You can break the curse and you can do the opposite of what the enemy has planned and has assigned for you. May God prosper you. May God heal you in Jesus' name, divine healing. May your marriage marriage succeed. May you be set free from drug addiction, set free from alcoholism, set free from oppression, set free from depression, and may the joy of the Lord be your strength in Jesus' name for you and for your children's children. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to begin to make a repairing of the breach in relationships, whether it be in uh, with fathers, with mothers, with sons, with daughters. Lord, you did it for me. You brought an absolute miracle with my father. God, you're no respecter of persons. And if you did it for me, you can do it for my brothers and sisters. Lord, I see a father being restored. I see a mother being restored. I see brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles, bloodline being restored. Lord, just like he did with Joseph and restored him back to his family, back to his brothers. And with the enemy and for evil, God, you're using it for good and the end in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for every individual that has strayed from the paths of righteousness, strayed from those old paths and which you've laid out from times of old. Lord, the 66 books of the Word of God and how the instructions, the basic instructions before leaving earth. Lord, if we strayed from these things, strayed from the foundation, strayed from the blueprints, strayed from our faith, God, I'm asking, uh, Lord, that the angels of God would just, just send out a net and begin to bring in those prodigal sons, bring in those prodigal daughters, bring in that backslidden preacher, bring in that backslidden 
black sitting, black slidden Sunday school teacher, that pastor, that prophet, that teacher, that apostle. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how gloomy it looks, how, how much doom has been proclaimed over you. God can restore you back unto the path of righteousness through prayer and through fasting and we just give you glory we give you praise and we give you honor lord i pray for every individual under the sound of my voice if there's anybody by chance that are watching this right now and they've never said yes to you jesus they've never given their heart to the lord i pray that the convicting power of the holy ghost would begin to sweep through that phone sweep through that tablet sweep through that desktop sweep through that whatever venue they're watching this on and begin to convict them lord i see tears flowing i see their heart beating out of their chest because it's convicting power of the Holy Ghost coming upon them. Lord, may they repent of their sins. And may they confess you, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. And may they begin to, to get a Bible, begin to read and study and follow and chase after you. Lord, may they be equipped. May they be discipled. May they be edified. May they plug themselves into a group of individuals or a home church or, uh, or a, the fellowship with other believers as they can begin to grow in their relationship with you. Guys, again, and we just we seal this right now, Father, in the name of your son, Yeshua, the name of Jesus, the name above every name, the only name given under heaven unto men in which we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, guys, listen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for sustaining my voice to be able to, to get this across. Uh, listen, we're going to continue on this fasting series. Um, I'm working on some other stuff, and we're going to pull some more stuff out of Isaiah 58. We're going to talk. We're going to hit on segments probably through the whole month of January. Again, these are going to go into our archives on YouTube, so you can go back and study this, be blessed by this, and be refreshed by this. As always, guys, I, I want to encourage you to subscribe. Intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. If you're watching by YouTube, please follow us on Facebook, uh, End Time Headlines, or you can follow us on Twitter. And our Twitter handles at End Time Headline. Again, at End Time Headline. If you're uh, watching this on Facebook, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube YouTube channel. That's End Time Headlines. So there you can go and find all these on archives, and you can share these and whatnot. Listen, if this ministry blesses you, it encourages you, it edifies you, it gives you information, revelation, and transformation. I want to encourage you to sow into this ministry. Listen, guys, I'm I'm telling you. God blesses those who, if, when you begin to seek first his kingdom and sow into ministries that are fruitful, that are, that are abounding, that are doing the work of Christ and that are blessing other people, God will bless you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So if this ministry blesses you and you may be watching this, you say, how can I be a blessing to this ministry? Listen, you can go. If you're on Facebook, there'll be a link at the top. If you're on YouTube, there'll be a link at the bottom on there that you can click on and you can sow a gift of any amount. You can uh, you can become a monthly partner, a one-time gift, or whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Um, if you wish to give by check, uh, you can, again, uh, click on that link, and it'll tell you how to do that as well. If you're, uh, And you can also go to our main website, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com, and there'll be many places there uh, as, as well that you can sow into this ministry. So as always, we love you guys. Listen, pray for me uh, for total healing. Um, uh, again, a sinus infection that I've been dealing with. And it's because, uh, I don't know about where you're at, but our weather goes from cold, real cold, to warm, to cold, to warm, to cold. And because of that, it just, it, it really messes with your sinuses and your respiratory. Uh, so again, total healing for myself. I'm believing, and I just want you to agree with me that God will heal me totally of these uh, sinus issues, headaches, inflammation, sore throat, blurriness of the eyes, total restoration in my healing. And I thank you, Jesus. And I thank you guys for praying with me. So we love you guys. God bless you. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.